What's going on guys? Welcome back to another installation video uh, today. As you can see, we got the bike all prepped up on the center stand because we have something really exciting going on today. We are going to do a new rear shock. Um, this is something I've wanted to do for a really long time. Bring the back end up a little bit, give us a little bit more ground clearance. I've always wanted to make this bike performance oriented and I think this is one of the best ways to do that. So we're gonna hop right into it. Um, and we'll, we'll show you what's going on. So here we go. Alrighty guys, so as you have already seen from the title of the video, today we are going with the RWD rear shock, the rest Wernamount design. They have partnered with Walker Evans Racing. A lot of experience creating some really quality pieces for cars, motorcycles, I'm pretty sure, all kinds of uh, race suspension. So I've heard nothing but good things about this shock. It is gonna add about an inch and a half to the bike there, you can see on the backside. We'll make sure to get a nice before and after on that fender gap for you. But uh, anyway, first things first, we gotta get the seat off. So we are, uh, we're gonna take care of that right now. All right. So now that we got the seat off, we can uh, actually see inside there, see what we're doing. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and take care of getting that, uh, that stock shock out of there, put the new one on, and then we're gonna go for a rip with this new thing so you guys can uh, hear my thoughts on the difference. But without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. So the first thing you'll wanna do is detach the remote reservoir for the factory shock from its bracket. It's super simple, just one bolt holding it in place. After that, go ahead and remove the metal guard that's in there. I'm pretty sure this serves as protection for the shock. Um, I think you can still get the factory shock out without taking it off, but it's way easier to remove if you do. After that, loosen the top bolt holding the factory shock. Don't remove it all the way though. You want the factory shock to still be loosely held in place. Next, you can remove the bottom bolt. Now, there's a fastener at the top that holds it into place. Make sure you loosen this first before you try to remove the bolt, otherwise you'll just end up snapping your Torx bit before it even comes loose. Now, after you've got the rear bolt out, go ahead and remove the top bolt, and then you can take out the factory shock. It's kind of tricky to wiggle it into the right spot, but just have some patience. Don't try to force it too much, and it should come out relatively easily. Next, you'll want to install the bracket to hold the RWD shock remote reservoir. Um, to do this, you need to remove the belt guard. Now, I know some people worry about removing it, but unless you're riding on really gravelly road, you should be fine. Plus, for me, I might end up doing a chain conversion anyway, so no worries. After you've got the bracket loosely installed, feed the remote reservoir between the fender and the frame so that the line sits on top of the swing arm. Put the remote reservoir into the bracket and position the new shock's top eyelet into the top mounting hole. And then you wanna loosely put the top bolt in just enough to hold the shock in place. So now this is where the center stand comes into play. You're gonna need to lift your bike up into position so that the new shock will line up with the lower mounting position. Um, just go up and down on the centered stand until you find the right spot and then tighten the lower mounting bolt into place. After you've tightened down the lower mounting bolt, make sure you do the same with the top one as well. You want it to be pretty tight, but just not torqued down all the way. Once the top and bottom bolts are both tightened, you can go ahead and tighten the bracket around the remote reservoir. Do not over tighten this. You want it to be just tight enough so that the reservoir doesn't move. Um, once everything's in place where it should be, torque down both shock bolts to spec. I'm pretty sure it's like 65 foot pounds, but check your service manual to be sure. Also, don't forget to replace the guard and re-tighten the retaining screw on the bottom shock, but after that, you should be all tightened down and ready to roll. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, just got it all buttoned back up with the seat on and everything, and look at that gap. Oh my goodness, that is a fender gap for sure. <laughs> I am so excited for this, and also, if we come around here, you guys can see. Oh boy, she is uh, she is gangsta leaning. 
my goodness <laughs> We got something coming to kind of help deal with that, but oh my, <laughs> that's awesome. But anyway, we're gonna hop on right now, actually, and um, I'm gonna give you guys some first impressions, and uh, yeah, we'll let you know, we'll let you know how she rides. So here we go. All righty, guys, what is going on? Look at that view! Woo! <laughs> I figured I'd take you guys on one of my favorite rides here, just nice and quick, chest out the rear shock. I haven't adjusted the preload on this thing at all or done anything with the stiffness, anything like that. This is just bone stock right out of the get-go, right out of the gate. Um, wow, it is a night and day difference. Uh, not only in comfort, like it actually, you know, it, okay, to be fair, when you're just going on like straight road like this, it's it's not a huge difference, at least as far as the comfort is concerned. But I feel like that's more to do with how good the stock suspension is. Now, what I will say is that where this shock really starts to shine is exactly where you'd expect it to, is right in the corners. Um, Oh my goodness, guys, having the extra lean angle, like you just, you feel so much more confident going into corners like this. And you just, you know, you can just rip through here and it, you feel, you feel planted and you also get that nice little bit of extra lean angle. That's, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to beat that, honestly. So yeah, like I said, the the stock shock is actually decently comfortable, but man, the the difference in the cornering ability is just it's huge. Now, once I you know once I get the front matching, it's gonna be like game over. But like right there, you know, like I'm leaned over a decent amount there. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I feel like. Normally in a corner like that, like that might have been where I was starting to scrape some pegs. And with this shock, I had room to spare there. Like that was crazy. Oh my God, no traffic, no. Why, why traffic? Why you gotta do me like that? Turn, turn, turn. All right, fine, I'll turn. I am not riding behind traffic right now, no way. Too much fun with this thing. Getting it leaned over. There we go. Yeah, this is this is super duper fun, man. This is a great, great improvement. I'm just gonna, you know what? We're just gonna show some clips of this ride. I don't even need to talk you through this, honestly. You'll uh <laughs> I think you'll get the picture. guys did a couple little laps there um, hopefully that gives you guys an idea of you know what this bike can do when you really start to um, get it get it going I mean my god it's just whew, it rips man I, I love this bike I think it's the perfect combo of performance and sportiness <laughs> or, <laughs> I think it's the perfect combo of performance and comfort there we go <laughs> um the only drawback that i would say to this shock the height of it it's also you know its best feature is also potentially a drawback if you're like me and you are uh 
a bit vertically challenged, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not the tallest guy in the world. When I've stopped here, I can definitely plant at least one foot and then I can touch both feet. But just to give you guys an idea, I'm five foot seven and the seat that I have on it as well, the SDC Saddleman adds just a little bit of height as well. So obviously if you're a taller guy, then don't even hesitate. Like this is the way to go. If you're, if you're like me and you like to ride the way that I do through the canyons and get in the corners and stuff and actually feel like, you know, you, you're getting a little extra lean angle and everything, I think this is a great option. I'm feeling, I'm feeling super comfy on it. So yeah. Um, anyway, guys, if you guys have any questions about why I decided to go higher or if you have, you know, similar recommendations for shocks that are kind of like this. I know that a lot of guys are going with like Olin's is a, is a popular choice. Um, I don't know if GP has one for the rear yet. I know their front end is a great option, but yeah, drop a, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys a fan of, of this shock? Should I have gone a different direction? You let me know. I'm always open to suggestions. You guys can tell me your opinion on stuff too i want like i said i want this to be you know i want this channel to really kind of grow into more of a community that people can come and kind of like you know discuss things not about just this bike but other bikes and all the other stuff that we have coming for you guys as well it's not all just going to be motorcycle content so stay tuned for more of that but either way i hope you guys have enjoyed the video if you did drop a like subscribe all that good youtube stuff and as always I will see you in the next one. Later. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. You gotta be kidding me. Here I come. Slingshot engaged. down.